Hello my sweets, it's Keisha. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you consider subscribing. I love the coastal trend that's happening right now, but I'll admit I don't have any in my home. Well, all of that's changed. I've been eyeing giant clamshells, but the prices are outrageous. So I decided to make my own using Dollar Tree products. If you'd like to see how, just keep watching. To begin this project, what you're going to need is a um, printout pattern from um, online, and I will have uh, the blog post that I got the pattern from, um, and also uh, there's another uh, blogger that I took inspiration from to complete uh, the clam bowl. Um, so I went on and I printed out the patterns that were provided and I went ahead and chose the size that I wanted to use and I cut it out. Then what I did um, was I went ahead and took a piece of poster board and um, made the pattern from poster board so it's a little bit um, more sturdy uh, because um, you'll be using this pattern several times. So once I um, did that, now what I'm gonna do is trace this onto cardboard. And um, give it a cutout. So the next thing I'm going to do is transfer these markings onto um, the cardboard. Right. Now what I'm going to do is draw them all in uh, with my ruler so that I can see them better. And for these cross ones here that were in red, these are your cut lines. Um, what I'm gonna do is stop them about a half an inch from our center point here. So I'm gonna take my ruler, just line it up to the 12 and stop a half inch before I get to the 12 on each side. Okay, so this is what you should have. I don't know if you can see those there. That's better. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and, well, no. Nope. First I'm going to score down this line here, down the center. And I'm just going to use this little Dollar Tree tool. So that we can just give it a fold here. Okay. Now I'm going to cut the slits and stop a half inch before that center mark. Okay. So now that this is cut out. I'm just going to start bending it a little bit just to help me again make it a little bit more pliable and easier to work with. This this is actually a box from Amazon, uh, one of the smaller boxes and I thought oh this is perfect but it it's quite strong. So. Just bending it this way first to give it kind of a curve 
and then I'm going to come back and kind of bend these up a little bit here. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need is your hot glue gun. And I found that, because um, I did do uh, some, uh, some of the other pieces before, I found that starting from the bottom um, for me was easier. Um, so that's how I'm going to show you how to do it. And, and it doesn't matter what side you glue it on, um, but I did find that uh, doing it from the back was easier for me as well. I am going to go ahead and skip the first or the last, depending on how you look at it, um, one here at the smaller end. I'm going to skip this one. Um, so with my um, finger on the one that I'm going to start with, I'm going to push forward the one next to it and place a little dab of hot glue. And then I'm just gonna maneuver this first piece over. Oops. And pinch it in the place. Now I'm only um, gonna be overlapping these about a quarter to a third of the way of the adjacent onto the adjacent flap. So I'm going to show you that again here. You're going to hold this one down on the opposite side and push this one forward. Then you're going to take a dab of hot glue in the corner and just overlap about a quarter to a third of the way. And you're just going to pinch and hold that glue until it kind of sets up a little bit. And I found that um, alternating the sides gives um, enough time for the glue to kind of harden. So once this side is set up, I'm going to flip it and come back to this side. And I'm going to push this one down again. Place my glue. And overlap. Okay, and on this last one, what I'm gonna do is just take this corner and glue it so that it's at the edge of this top piece here. So I'm gonna actually take my glue on this side and then stick it down just like that. And I'll bring it up closer so you can and I see that this corner is just meeting at the edge here. Okay. And for the last one, I'm gonna do the same thing. And this is what you should have. This is what it looks like sideways. So the next step is you're just going to take it and squeeze a little bit. Oops. So it looks something like this. Okay, so I have um, about six of these made um, and you don't have to do that many um, 
you can do less. Uh, five or six is what uh, they were saying. On one of the blogs was saying um, is the amount of um, I guess segments or scallops that uh, the shell typically has, but um, it's your shell, you do it how you want to. I was experimenting and uh, tried to use tape and decided that hot glue was um, a lot easier for me to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these together. And so what we're gonna do is glue the edges together. Um, I also have some clamps here uh, if I need some extra help uh, getting these put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clamp it here to begin with just to have them kind of set up for me. And I'm just gonna run hot glue along the edge here and st stick them together. I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time. Alright, so this is what we have so far. And what I'm going to do is um, build from the center out. So next I'm going to come in with this on this side of the tape. We'll just make that one the center one. And clip and glue. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is to bring these pieces in just a little bit to make it have more of a shell-like shape. So I will be on these two pieces here. I'm going to be gluing and pinching them together so it has this appearance on both sides. And then what I'm gonna do is come in and kind of bring this portion in on the ends. So first, what I wanna do is glue these slits back down. And then go from there. So this is what we have so far. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add some uh, additional claws to it. Now, um, if you like it like this, you don't have to do this part, but um, I'm going for a particular look here um, in the shell. So what I'm gonna do is um, I made a piece here that looks like this and what I'm gonna do is come inside of these joints here with the um, once I cut the cardboard and glue them in this fashion here so <clears throat> um, this is basically um, it's almost like an extension to this piece it's just a little bit shorter little uh, half oval shape. Um, the one that I made here, if you use uh, this particular size, um, measures five inches wide by about four and a half inches tall. And you just oval it out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take my piece here and trace it. I didn't make this out of um, cardstock, so it's a little bit easier to trace. Okay. 
and I'm going to need five of these pieces and I've already cut <coughs> the other four um, for the interest of time. So then I'm going to take this piece and kind of just bend it up so it's pliable, but you want it to be kind of creased in the middle or be able to find the middle for when you're ready to apply it. So they're going to go in here like this. So I'm going to start gluing these in. I'm going to put some glue down in this crack here to begin. Then I'm going to stick this in there with the glue. And I'm going to finish gluing it around. And you're just curving that around. Okay, and so that's how that's going to look. And here's the, how the back will look. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the, the rest and I will be back when it's done. So all of the little peaks or um, claws have been added. Um, now if you want to customize this even further, this would be the time to do that. And I think what I want to do is, uh, this is looking just kind of uniform for me. So I'm going to cut some of these down. Um, I'm definitely going to take uh, the sharp edges off of this portion here, just to kind of customize it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural or what I would think would look natural. So I'm going to start doing that here. So I'm just going to kind of curve the edge off of this. I'm going to do the same with this side. And I think I'm going to come over and pinch this. So if you're wanting to cut this down some, what you have to do is turn it upside down and pinch it into your hand. And then just follow the curve however you, if you want to cut any off. And then, so you just want to do it a little bit at a time though. You don't want to just start going crazy at it because you can um, end up taking too much and it'll be easier to take a little bit at a time versus taking a whole lot and then you kind of have to not so much start over, but start over with the claw parts by peeling off the glue. Hey, I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get set up for the next step. And I will be back. So for the next step, we're going to be applying this tissue paper uh, to the shell. And I've already cut some strips here, but I just wanted you to see, um, this is about, I think, four sheets that I cut in thirds, or sort of in thirds. And then I just cut uh, various, various widths of, um, widths of it from there. So, um, 
I don't know if this is gonna be enough, but I have some more if I need it. And um, also here I have glue mixed with water. So white glue, uh, two parts glue to one part water. Um, so in this instance here, what I have in here is uh, two ounces of glue to one ounce of water. And then if I need to mix up more than I can. Um, so now basically all we're gonna do is cover this. Um, oh, and I have it setting here um, on parchment paper on top of a um, placemat from the Dollar Tree. And I just came into these um, 25 sheets of parchment paper from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, excuse me. And um, I like having them here in the craft room so I'm not having to run into the kitchen and um, get the one from there. So anyway, you're just gonna take strips and you know, just like when we were younger, paint on the glue and then stick down the paper. So I'm gonna do this until this is covered. I'll likely do at least two, maybe three um, layers of this just to give it uh, some strength and then uh, let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step. So I'm gonna keep doing this here and I'm not gonna make you watch me do this entire thing. Um, so what I'll do is I will work on this and then I will come back and show you what it looks like before I leave it set to dry. I forgot to come back before it was uh, completely dry. Um, I apologize for that. But here it is completely dry. Um, and on the back, I'm just going to admit it now, I had a, a moment or a span of time where I kind of um, freaked out a little bit because I guess I, was, I just wasn't being patient enough for it to dry. So um, I was like, wow, this a cardboard is really soggy. So I painted it, <laughs> I don't know why, I just started trying to think of solutions and I painted it white, which is completely an unnecessary step. Um, just have patience and um, it, it'll be all right. What do they say? Trust the process. So I um, put about two to three layers on here. And then what I did was I came back in with hot glue because the next step that we're gonna do is um, use some spackling. And I wanted to minimize the amount of spackling that I would have to use, um, especially for the drying time because apparently I have no patience and might start painting it before it's dry. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. What I'm gonna do is come in with this lightweight speckling that you can get at Dollar Tree. I have two containers out here. I'm hoping that's all that I will be using, but if not, I will let you know um, how many containers I use and if it's cost effective to use the Dollar Tree speckling or if you should just go ahead and get a bigger container from like Walmart or a hardware store. So this is what it looks like when you um, open it up and it's not all dried up. If you do happen to get a container that's kind of dried up, all you have to do is squirt some water in there. And I think it does say on the directions that you can do that and then stir it up and um, get it back to this nice consistency here. So what I'm gonna do is just start scooping it out 
and smoothing it into the inside. So. And again, I'm not gonna um, make you watch the whole process of doing this because I, I feel like that might get boring, but all I'm gonna do is just smooth it into here and then um, come back over it with a sponge once it starts to set up a little bit and uh, really smooth it out. So we're just gonna start on the inside and do it like you're frosting a cake and kind of smooth it out on there. So you want it to, you know, have the appearance of a natural shell. Okay, this is my shell covered in about two thin layers of the spackling and um, it's dry now at this point. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, turn it over and go on to the back. Um, now with this, um, when I was doing the front, I noticed on some of these parts that um, where I had come down with the hot glue. Um, when I was here in the front, I noticed that it, the spackling wasn't sticking to uh, the hot glue portions. So what I did was I went ahead and um, took some of the leftover strips that I had and covered them uh, with the glue solution and uh, the tissue paper. Um, so what I would recommend is if you do plan on filling in uh, some of the crevices, um, do it before you actually uh, cover it uh, the, when I did it the first time. So you, would you can avoid having to then go back and do um, more of the tissue paper on here. So now, I found that when I was doing the front, the tools just weren't doing it for me. And I actually started to go in with just my fingers and um, do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is uh, start with that process just to get kind of a layer on here. And I just wanted to show you also that this, I used almost a full can or container of the spackling in the front. So I will need to go over to that second can, container, excuse me, and um, start using that for the back here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just start putting this on here and get a layer going and let that get set up and then uh, let yeah let that set up for a little bit and then come over it again with another layer I found that just doing it in thinner layers uh, is a lot easier and I can get thinner layers with my fingers um, doing it that way um, but I will need to come over come back over with another layer because on the back we will um, end up adding some texture to this and we're gonna be using a comb to do that. So um, I just wanna make sure that we have kind of a good base or I have kind of a good base to get started and then um, be able to add a thick enough layer that's not too thick, but thick enough to show the grooves as we put the comb through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this first layer and let that get set up and then come back and do the next layer. Okay, so this is what the back of the shell is looking like now. And um, what I did was I did two thin layers on here. Um, I originally was just gonna do a total of two, um, but when I <laughs> Um, put the first layer and I came back to check it um, I, Somehow I missed a lot of um, spots. I don't 
I'm not sure what happened. Um, but then, so then what I did was I just went over it again. So now um, what I'm gonna do is come in with more, and this is the second container of the uh, lightweight spackling. And I have a comb here and a fork just in case. And um, dinner's gonna be good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what I'm gonna do is come in and cover um, a good amount of the area I think is probably going to uh, work best. And then come through and just run the either the comb or the fork over it to give the outside of the shell some texture. Um, so I'm going to start applying this again with my fingers and I'm just going to work from the back of the shell here. And just smooth on a layer. And let's see, just you just want to put some texture lines in it, and I don't think that this comb is going to work because the uh, teeth on it are kind of thick. So let's try the fork. I don't have it. Oh, I don't even have any there. There we go. Okay, so you just want to run over this and make it have some texture on it there. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of knock off some of this excess so it doesn't dry on there. So that's what we have so far. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going until I reach the, um, the other side. Okay, so this is what it looks like just after I finished doing the um, texturing on it. So now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and set this down and let it completely dry. And then once it's dry, um, we'll move on to the next step. Now, um, there was a lot of the stuff that was scraping off. Just wanted to show you that I did <laughs> save it in another cup here. This is the one that I was working out of to smooth it on, but I was able just to pick up the parchment paper and pour it back down into this cup so it can be used for future product pro projects. Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside to dry and get cleaned up and I'll be back when it's fully dry. Okay, so the shell has had a chance to dry and here it is with uh, the back of it uh, is the last thing we did with all of the texture on it. And then what I did for the inside was I tried the the sponge, um, wet sponge technique to smooth it. Um, it wasn't uh, working out too good for me. So I ended up just taking a piece of sandpaper and um, sanding it down as best I could. Um, and then what I did was I came in to prime it with the Waverly uh, chalk paint in white. Uh, just the inside um, is what I did with the white. Um, I haven't done anything to the back. 
Um, now the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and start painting the inside. And I'm going to be using these two colors here. This is folk art. Um, and it is pearl white. I don't know how well you can see that. I apologize. It's uh, pretty overcast today and I've got every light on that I can. Um, so it's pearl white. And um, I also have this Anita's All Purpose, and this one is a pearl pink. It's a metallic pearl pink. Um, I did a mixture of the two in this container to lighten up the pink a little bit. And then I just have the plain white here in another container. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is do the pink out to white, so the pink in the middle areas, and then go out to white on the on the sides. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So this is what it's looking like so far. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way that this looks. And I'm gonna let it dry and just make sure I didn't miss any spots uh, with the color. And then we'll move on to the back. The paint is uh, dry at this point and I don't think that I see any spots that I missed but I will give it uh, another once over in a different light before I seal it. Um, but now what we're gonna do is go over to the back side. And on this side, I mixed up um, some white chalk paint by Waverly and the moss color by Waverly. And this is what it looks like here. So um, it's a lighter shade. Again, um, bear in mind that this will dry a little bit darker. And what I'm gonna do is take this little jacked up brush that I have here and um, kind of stipple the color all over. Um, so kind of just like jam it in there all over the place and I'm just going to go around like this on the back of the um, entire shell until I'm satisfied with the way that it looks. So that's what it's looking like so far. And I feel like I want to add just a little bit of this darker, or not darker, but the moss um, uh, not mixed in with anything. feel like uh, there's any places where you may have gotten a little out, out of control with a darker color, you can always come back in and kind of just tap the lighter color over it. Um, and we're also going to do another layer of paint over this as well. So I'm going to let this dry up a little bit while I get the container open. Got to do that, and um, we'll move on to the last layer of paint. Okay, and the 
last color that I'm going to use is the plaster um, by Waverly and um, and then just come over and kind of with the chip brush um, do that motion which I, <laughs> I guess it would be a dry brush but I'm going to see just how far I'm going to take it here so I'm going to um, take what's out of the lid and get some of this off and then just start going over everything here. And this is this is just gonna help give it a little bit more dimension and hopefully make it look more real that's what I'm going for here so I'm just going to continue doing this until it's covered and again if you feel like um, you got a little bit too much of the um, the lighter color that you're going to use. I might have used white, but um, I'm almost out of uh, white chalk paint, so this is the uh, next best thing. So, um, but anyway, if you feel like uh, you got a little bit too much of your white or lighter color, um, you can still go back in with the green and add more green back in so, but I'm just gonna uh, go in the directions of the texture and just get this thing the shell getting how I like it to look So this is what this is looking like and I am very satisfied with the look of this and so the, only, the last thing I'm going to do here is make sure again that um, I covered all the spots here on the inside um, and then if I went over too far <coughs> with the green um, I'm going to make sure that it's uh, that's taken care of and then I'm going to seal it and we'll take a look at how it looks when it's done. I have sealed the clamshell. I did two coats on the front and one coat on the back. Um, I don't particularly like that it's a little bit shiny on the back, but um, maybe once it's not so humid here, um, I can do a spray matte. Now what I used, because um, it's been quite humid here, is I had to uh, paint on um, this varnish through Waverly. It's matte. Um, it's a durable indoor-outdoor uh, sealant. So. Uh, um, I wanted to uh, make sure that I showed you that that's what I uh, used. Also, um, there was a question that I had from one of the viewers on another video that I did uh, using Spackle, and it was uh, the JAR uh, Open Invite collaboration we did. If you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and uh, link it up above and um, down below if you don't know what I'm talking about but I had a viewer ask a question if the um, spackling had um, cracked now with that project it didn't I did notice um, some cracking um, on the insides of some of this here 
Um, once I went and painted it, uh, it's not as noticeable, but I imagine the reason why it cracked is because it was still kind of pliable um, while I was still trying to uh, manipulate the cardboard to get it to harden. So I just wanted to address those couple things. Now you can see that it's um, pretty firm. I'm, you don't want to put too much pressure on it, but it is pretty firm. So last thing I'm going to do is actually set this up a couple of different ways so you can see how um, this can be used. Um, and I also did want to show you these. Uh, these are like um, the, uh, they call them monkey fists. Um, so now this one is painted, but you can find this in the um, pet section of Dollar Tree. It's a uh, dog toy and I'll bring this closer. And it's actually like a monkey fist. You just have to paint it. This one's like neon green um, and pink. Uh, and I painted it with the plaster um, chalk paint. This took about four coats to cover all of that green and you can still see some of the pink coming through here, but that's okay. So stay tuned to see how I style this. I absolutely adore this clamshell and I love its versatility. I've shown a couple ways to style it now, but imagine pumpkins and leaves for the fall and clear ornaments and twinkling lights for Christmas. The possibilities are endless. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and leave me a comment below. If you'd like to see more, subscribe and choose all notifications so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, love, inspire, create. See you next time.